Hello, my name is Sean Brooks and I am an applications engineer at Maxim Integrated. In this video, I'll introduce the Max 78000 EV kit, which features the Max 78000 low power artificial intelligence microcontroller. And I'll also show you how to use the Maxim SDK to build, program, and debug example applications. So this is what you'll find in the box. The Max 78000 PCB, a Pico adapter, an Olamex adapter, an extra pack of shunts, a camera mod module and camera module adapter, and some USB cables. So the first thing you'll want to do is power the board up just to see that everything works. So you can connect this USB cable to your computer and turn the power on. The TFT display will light up and the power monitor LCD will come on. The default firmware that we have uh, on the kit is a keyboard spotting demo. Press PB1 to start, which is right here. Left, right, up, down. So everything's working well. Now what I'd like to do is take you around the board and point out all the major features. So the USB port not only provides power to the board, but it has a UART to USB bridge in it. So you can connect this cable to your, uh, your host PC, run some PC terminal software, and capture printouts. Here we have the camera interface port, and I'll go ahead and show you the camera. So this is the camera module, and you can see the camera element right in the middle. And you can insert it as such. The camera is facing out, or you can reorient it using this right angle header so that it faces up. So out or up, either way. Next we have uh, some push buttons. We have a, a wake up button so you can experiment with deep sleep wake up, a reset button, and two debug ports. One for the wrist 5 and one for the arm. So the Max 78000 is a dual core chip uh, with the wrist 5 and the arm. Uh, and you can connect two different debuggers up and debug simultaneously that way. We have an input for an external clock signal two user accessible buttons. This header connects to the internal ADC. We have two user accessible LEDs. And then this section here is the power monitor. And the power monitor has its own CPU, its own LCD and push buttons. And the purpose of the power monitor is to measure power consumption of the four rails, the four voltage rails that feed the Max 78000. We have uh, several shunts here that control uh, power application to the chip, including an external boost regulator uh, that's useful for developing uh, AI algorithms that require uh, relatively more power. There's a set of headers here and here that give access to various TPIOs and signals to test various modes on the board. Uh, the EV kit data sheet will go into detail exactly what all that stuff does. Uh, finally, we have uh, a 320 by 240 color TFT with an integrated touch screen. So now I'd like to show you how to connect the board uh, for debugging. So you can take the Pico debugger, which is this very small PCB, the flat cable, and you can use it to debug the arm core uh, by inserting the cable into this keyed header and then connecting uh, the USB port to your uh, debug computer. Also, you can use the Olamax debugger. And you will not need this cable, but you will need this adapter. And then 
it's easy to it's easy to miss the pin so make sure you get it right and then you can attach that to the risk board and you can connect the USB port to to the same PC that you're using to debug the ARM core so you can have two debug two debuggers going at the same time so now I will show you how to use the Maxim STK to uh, compile and debug programs using Eclipse. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is download the Maxim SDK from the Maxim website and get it installed on your computer. And once you do that, just uh, click on the Maxim Eclipse link launch Eclipse uh, and it'll ask you where you want to put your workspace. I'll just accept that. Give Eclipse a few seconds to sort things out. And then select Maxim Microcontrollers or you can also do a file new Maxim Microcontrollers. So select that, ask for a project name and now it's going to ask you a few questions. Uh, chip type, 78000. EV kit, yes, that's the one we have. Uh, there's a few example apps that you can uh, load. And we'll just go ahead and choose Hello World. And since we're using the Pico, we will select uh, the Max 3265 Pico. Hit finish. And it will import the project. And now we can launch the debugger. Uh, Eclipse needs to know which debugger to use. It is the GDB Open OCD Debugging. If you click that open, you'll find the name of whatever you named the project will be right there. Just click on it and hit debug. And we're at the top of Main. So this the first thing that's going to happen is this printf is going to print hello world and, and what's going to it's going to print it out to the USB serial bridge. Uh, so we need to open a terminal on our PC in order to see that. So let's I use putty. Any terminal will work. Oh, that's not it. So if you don't know what COM port it is, uh, you can go to Device Manager. Apparently I don't remember. Um, and COM8. So this embed serial port, I actually know that is the Pico. Uh, so that's not the one we want. This is the EV Kits serial port and I could discover that by hot plugging the EV Kit and I could see that this COM port would appear and disappear. So COM8 is what I want. Let's load putty again. There we go. Move things around a little bit so we can see everything. So if I single step through there, we should see uh, Hello World appear on the terminal. Uh, actually, I'm just going to let it run. So Hello World, and it'll start, and it'll start counting, uh, which is this printf here. And it also exercises the LEDs on the EV kit. So that should get you started with uh, just the generic peripheral oriented examples. But if you want to work with the CNN, you need to do something a little bit different. So let's go ahead and stop this. And we're going to import one of the CNN examples. And how we're going to do that is file import general existing projects into workspace. So let's see. Maxim SDK. Examples. Um, Max 78000. CNN. So here are all of our CNN examples. So to to repeat it's it's the SDK where you install the SDK 
example subdirectory max 78,000 CNN. That's the path you want. Uh, and I don't want them all, so I'll deselect and just pick the one I'm interested in. So we'll go with uh, MNIST. That's sort of the, the hello world for uh, machine learning. And switch back over to our project view, and there it is. And I'll go ahead and close test and then build MNIST, so build project. And now we're ready to debug. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is hit the debug, and we go through the same thing here. Um, we want to use GDB Open OCD debugging, MNIST, debug. And we're at the top of main. So if we just hit go, we'll probably see some output on the terminal. And there we go. So it, it gives you uh, some status for the CNN and the result of um, the application. For those who might not be familiar, MNIST is a machine learning model that's been trained to recognize handwritten digits, 0 through 9. This example includes an embedded image of the number 7, which is presented to the network. As you can see, the network correctly identifies the glyph with 67.7% confidence. This is a great example to start with for those coming from a traditional embedded background who are just getting started with machine learning. In addition to MNIST, the SDK provides several other machine learning model examples using the CNN. And you can find these in the examples Maxim 78000 CNN directory. Here's what you'll find there. Cats and Dogs is a network that attempts to determine if an image is of a cat or a dog. One version of this example provides a simple known answer test and the other uses the camera to acquire network input data. CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 are examples that provide a simple object classification test using the popular CIFAR data set. Next we have the Face ID demos. These demos generate a 512 length embedding that can be used for face recognition from face images. It is trained with the VGG Face-2 dataset using MTCNN and FaceNet models for embedding generation. Face ID underscore EV kit uses the camera module to capture input data. And finally we have KWS20 and KWS20 demo. These demos classify audio into 20 different keywords. It's trained with the second version of Google's speech command data set, uh, which consists of 35 keywords and more than 100,000 utterances. Uh, the KWS20 demo uses the onboard microphone to capture input data.